Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is just an update about the community media discussion. And this week we're going to have a conversation about the impact of the consolidation of local BBC radio in England. Uh, If you remember uh, a week or two ago, it was announced that the uh, local stations uh, for England would be limiting their original content produced specifically from uh, individual places. So Leicester, for example, after 2 p.m. each afternoon, Monday to Friday, will combine with Northampton and at weekend it will combine with Nottingham and Derby. So there's a a massive, um, there's a number of questions that need to be uh, considered about this and what the impact is and how this affects, if you like, the whole ecology, the the, the system of local media in different places. And I'm not really sure that we have uh, such a strong conversation about this in terms of radio because we've seen a lot of consolidation in recent years through the commercial sector and Bauer and Global have basically become brand-led and personality-led networks and they're not really based in places and they're not about places. And it's always interesting to ask those kind of questions about place and what uh, what affinity we have to a place and the, I think the, the thing to that came out of our discussion last week is that we can't really just consider uh, news and information which is what the BBC are maybe pushing this towards as being if you like a, a bullet of information of, you know if you think about uh, the analogy that helps me to think about this is if you th- if you have a, a need for stimulation and, um, you know, uh, so sugar and caffeine, uh, you can either go and buy an energy drink from a corner shop, and there are many hundreds of these things with various levels of flavours, and, and but it's a nice contained can of stimulation, or you can uh, go to a restaurant, uh, or you can buy the food yourself, and you can... Uh, have a meal and you can have a culture around that meal where you think about your identity, the place that that food represents and where it's from. <coughs> and so thinking you know, the model that you know that is being suggested is that you know really all we need is news and information. You know, updates, traffic updates, news headlines, um, what's going on, notice board type information. But There's more to radio than just providing updates and information. There's got to be something which is about um, the shared experience and what it means to belong and come from or live in or come to a particular place. And if everything sounds homogenised, if everything is the same, if it's very similar, I like to go on holiday and I often take a radio with me. And one of the problems with modern radio is it is very formulaic and you can go around the world. I, I saw an interview with uh, David Byrne, uh, the, the former lead singer of Talking Heads. So he got really excited about going to Brazil because he wanted to uh, listen to a lot of Latin music. And he said when he got there, it was the same stuff that's being played everywhere else anyway. And the tech industry, you know, Apple and Spotify and Google... They've kind of formed this uh, taste-led, yes, it's, you know, it's kind of distinction and different differentiation, but it's not so pronounced as a kind of geographically led. And it's interesting if you if you listen, go through some of the um, the the playlists that uh, Apple uh, uh, used to promote music in different places. There, there is a homogenization. It kind of sounds the same. It's very imitative very similar kind of styles. It's just maybe the language changes, but the format stays the same. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it's a challenge that's befallen our media industries and our radio industry that everybody's 
trying to compete globally and nobody is really concerned about what it means to do stuff locally. So in the last couple of weeks, uh, I've spent some time, uh, I went to Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales and recorded some, helped train some people about recording some podcasts. And we were really focused on, and it, you know, it was really apparent that you know, there is a strong sense of local identity, a sense of belonging that comes through from the local experience and that but it, it's stimmied in a way. There's no way that that expression of identity, or very few ways, maybe sport, maybe you know, kind of football or rugby or something, enables that expression of belonging and identification with a place. Uh, but even that now, you know, if you if football fans, Premiership football fans particularly, you know, you don't, you know, you have a global Manchester United, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, all, the, all those clubs have global followings now. They're not so fixated, fixed within the place that they originated anymore. It's not so important to them. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it provides a platform for them, but and being rooted in that place is part of their of what they do. But the players don't live locally anymore. You know, they're not they're not born and bred in the streets. Uh, around the stadium anymore you know they come through from an international network of agents and spotters and brand managers and you know and the list goes on uh, and and yes maybe we just are living in a different world but i you know to some extent place and people's identification with place still really matters and, and having local voices where you know you've got a space that's you know kind of created for you that i think the crucial thing and that you know again the re really important way of thinking about this is I, I i you know you've got to be able to go down to your local radio station and knock on the door and talk to them and say look you know this 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 is the kind of program and we want you want to be able to see people the djs the producers the the managers the volunteers you know, getting the same kind of buses as you do, you know, as we do, getting using the same shops, going to the same schools, uh, because a sense of belonging is massively important. And this is what was recognised in the government's level and up report, uh, uh, white paper about the idea that uh, social capital really matters. And, you know, often what happens is our media industries are put forward as stepping stones into the next league up. And actually, there are many people who don't want to be uh, uh, pulled away from the, the place where they feel they belong in order to just go and have a job. They, they might have a job that they find meaningful, but they have no expression, no way to deliberate and talk with other people about what matters to them because the expectation is is oh well you must want to go and work for Netflix or Disney or you know the BBC in London um and it's become this kind of uh, uh you know kind of uh escalator to, uh, you know to in into other f levels uh, of engagement uh, which you know are, are very well produced and very well made. I'm not complaining about the quality of some of the content. I think a lot of it is remarkably good, um, but it's not locally produced and it's not locally derived. And you know what what roots our identity in our place, in our neighbourhood, the people that we uh, live with, and how easy is it to manage that? And how easy is it to get a sense of what that's about and how that works? So I, I was just kind of thinking, you know, the the DCMS committee, the uh, MPs who form the House of Commons Digital Culture uh, Media and Sport Committee are going to be questioning BBC executives. I think it's the 1st of December. And what kind of questions would you want to ask them? What kind of... Uh, you know, what you want from the BBC that will explain and justify this decision and allay the fears that many of us have. You know, what do we want in terms of an answer? And I thought it would be useful to think about how we could maybe interact with our MPs and maybe contact your local MP. Uh, this is perhaps an issue which might go beyond party politics. 
Uh, I'm not sure entirely. I'm not seeing much from the Labour Party uh, and and the government. You know, the, the Conservative Party have been in power for twelve years now, and and they've set the rules for this, and they've they've you know brought you know, made made the created the climate in which this situation has occurred. But I'm not seeing much that says to me that this would be an alternative plan. Uh, so if 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 another government comes in. Um, what what are they going to do? What is the importance of local uh, and self determination for communities and diversity and inclusion uh, for voices? For for you know we have a very narrow set of perceptions about media, and I would like to see somebody at some point saying, okay, you know the the commercial corporate media sector serves itself very well. They don't need us to look after them. They've got what they want and they need. They've got their market freedoms. Uh, what we need to be doing is investing in other people who see things in a slightly different way, who, who have that strong <coughs> to level up, to use a phrase. That's what I'm try really trying to say. So I thought it'd be useful for us to have a conversation about this. Uh, really great to get a range of different views about this and to share these uh, ideas at some point um, I certainly feel as if we should be getting to the point of making a podcast about this so if you've got any thoughts or any ideas that you want to share uh, come along to our community media discussion and you get to that by signing up at Patreon uh, even though it might just be a small gesture of a couple of pounds a month uh, to sign up it really makes a difference one it boosts your confidence to know that there's people out there who think about this and I appreciate uh, uh, that I know time's difficult and have found in the right time for when we do these sessions uh, maybe need to look at that again to make sure that we can kind of get as many people in as possible um, so any ideas about that but really just to kind of you know it kind of does help to uh, uh, feel a bit more confident that this is a, a topic uh, these are topics that are, are, are other people are thinking about as well um, and, and it's not just crazy Rob going off on one because he's indignant about what he's seen in the Daily Mail at some point, which is usually what triggers things like this anyway. So anyway, um, so yeah, 6 p.m. on Thursdays is our usual time. And if you want to get in contact with me, the best way is Twitter or Instagram at Decentered Media. The website is Decentered dot co dot uk and the patreon sign up is patreon.com slash decentered media uh, but i'll see you soon visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on instagram and twitter at decentered media